Hare Krishna and welcome to all the devotees online for our continued seminar on the six limbs of surrender, Sharanagati, uh, seven, session number six. Let us cover the Mangala Charan prayers. Om Ajnana Timivandasya Gyananjana Shavakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Shriyam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadandikam Vandeham Shri Guru, Shri Utapada Kamalam, Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahagana Gunatam, Vitam, Tam Sajivam, Sadvetam, Savadutam, Parijana, Saitam, Krishna Chaitan, Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Sahagana Lalita, Shri Vishakan, Vitam, Shcha, E Krishna Karuna Sindo, Dina Bando, Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Vada Kanta, Namaskate, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, Vade Vrinda Veneshwari, Vrishabana Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari, Vanchakal Pataru Vyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vepacha, Patita Nampa Venebio, Vishna Vebio, Namo Namaha, Namo Mishna Padaya Krishna Prista Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Jinami, Namaste Sarasati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvisha Sasanivadi Pastata de Satavine, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda, Shri Advaita Gradar Shiva Sari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Um Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Um Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Um Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So let us hear some feedback. Uh, even though uh, we had a weekend, a break, let's see if you could remember uh, some of the points that we covered in session five, accepting the Lord as uh, one's guardian, Lord and master. Any points that you felt interesting that you learned, uh, please share that in the chat, or you can also unmute if you want to speak. Bro, oh, I have, um, I did make, kept some notes for last day. If you could just Good. take us through again the difference, or is there a difference between Angi and Anga? Yeah. Angi and Anga, yeah. Angi means primary, primary limb or the foundation limb. And Anga means uh, the subsequent limb. So, for example, in a house, when you're building a house, you have a foundation. Yes. And you, then you got the walls and you got the roof. You can't build the walls. So you can't build the four walls and the roof if you don't have a foundation. Mm -hmm. Right? So the foundation plus the four walls plus the roof uh, gives you your six limbs. Okay. The four walls and the roof uh, are important, but the most important is your foundation. Therefore, your foundation is called angi. And the walls and the roof is called anga. You can't have the angas without the angi, without the foundation. Foundation. Yeah. So foundation is a must. It's it's where the others are built upon. Okay. So this limb of accepting the Lord, uh, accepting the Lord as your guardian, uh, as one's master, totally uh, accepting the Lord as my maintainer. Basically, that's in essence. One is accepting the Lord as my maintainer. Just like a servant uh, serves the master, and for the servant, the master is the maintainer. 
for an for when you working for your boss, your boss is maintaining you. He's paying your salary. So your maintainer is the boss. Our uh, somebody who's on the path of surrender, uh, full surrender, because surrender, as we said, is a process. So in the beginning, uh, one is you know one may have a little aspect of surrender and then greater and greater. Somebody is fully surrendered. He accepts without doubt. Krishna is maintaining you completely. One time, uh, one you know very uh, challenging person came to a devotee and was challenging the devotee that you know God doesn't maintain you. Uh, it's the salary and the money that's maintaining you, not God. Mm -hmm. And the devotee was adamant: No, God is maintaining me. Mm -hmm. My Gopal is maintaining me. And uh, this atheist. He said, no, uh, I meant, uh, he's, no, he said, uh, God is, uh, he said, wealth is maintaining you and I'll prove it. So the devotee said, you can prove, no problem. So then uh, what happened was this man was very wealthy. So uh, he paid a, he paid somebody and he told that, that person, I want you to do something. I'm going to give you money and I want you to go and give this person like, you know, a donation or here's some money for you, right? For your maintenance and without telling them where the money is coming from. So that's what they did. So this man, uh, he paid this gentleman, the gentleman went to the devotee and says, yeah, here's some money for your maintenance. So the devotee said, oh, wonderful, thank you. And this happened a few times. Eventually, uh, this uh, gentleman approached the devotee and said, so, uh, you know, how was your whole week? So oh, wonderful, Krishna is providing and maintaining. Says, uh, well, what happened? Says, no, somebody was coming to me and giving me, you know, donations every day. No problem, Krishna is maintaining. And then the gentleman says, uh, is this the person? Says, oh yeah, this person. Says, actually, I paid him. I gave him the money to give you. Uh, so that proves that actually I was maintaining. Uh, the devotee folded hands and so, uh, Gopal, just see how amazing you are. You can even use an atheist uh, to provide and maintain me. How wonderful you are. Uh, so in this way, the devotee uh, always sees Krishna's, con devotees convince Krishna's maintaining. Yeah. So that's the foundation, foundational principle. Is that okay? Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's that thing. All right. No other feedback? Okay. Hope you learned something. And also learned about that Krishna is the Supreme Father, right? Yes. Of all of us. Krishna is uh, the seed giving father of all living entities. Mm -hmm. And because Krishna is a seed giving father, uh, then as children, uh, we should be respectful. We should be obedient. We should uh, be having a loving relationship with our Supreme Father. Let us, so we are covered uh, having firm faith that the Lord will maintain one in every way. Uh, this is, uh, as we mentioned, Koptrit uh, Varanam is the Angi, and the Lord will personally carry what we lack and preserve what we have. And we gave the example, Prabhupada shared the pastime of Arjuna Chalya. So today we're going to cover, uh, in session six, we're going to cover Atmani Vedanam. This is uh, where uh, one has one has no interest separate from the interests of the Lord. One is uh, nivedam, generally means and uh, like uh, an offering. Uh, so one is uh, offering oneself atma nivedan. One is offering oneself completely uh, to the supreme Lord. So understanding uh, this. Uh, limb of surrender, atma nivedanam. It is, uh, the definition is given, Krishna yarpita dehasya nirmamasya ahankrite manasastat swarupatvam smritam atma nivedanam. So these are four statements. Uh, the first one is Krishna Yarpita Dehasya. Then the second statement, Nirma, Nirma Masya Ahankarate. And then the third, Mamasastat Swarupatvam. And 
Srimatam uh, Atmani Vedanam, the definition. So, this is the definition of uh, full surrender, Atmani Vedanam. So, the first is uh, that the devotee of the Lord who is applying this or following this principle of Atmani Vedanam. And we know the classic example is Maj Bari Bali. He surrendered to Vamanadev completely. The first is engaging, uh, giving one's body, surrendering one's body, Deha. That is uh, the first aspect of Atmani Vedanam. Then uh, the second is Nirmamatsya, Ahankrita. He is completely free from false ego and a false sense of proprietorship. So if we really meditate on that, because in many processes, using one's body is there. It's a given fact. Uh, we engage in, you know, karma, use our body. In jnana yoga, we're using our body. In yoga, we different, stanga yoga, we're using our body. Uh, in sadhana bhakti, we're always using our body. So using the body is there. But uh, being free from false ego and false sense of proprietorship. A devotee on this level, devotee who's uh, applying this principle completely, this limb, he has absolutely no false ego. That means this I, I am this body, does not exist. Mm -hmm. So this false identification ceases to exist completely. One is totally convinced of one's true identity. And therefore, there is absolutely no identification with this physical body. Robert says, all problems in life, in this material world, is due to the skin disease. I'm black, I'm white, therefore I fight. Uh, or I, uh, this land belongs to me, uh, therefore I will claim it, and we fight. Uh, my religion is better than your religion, and we fight. So in this way, people identify, I'm human, uh, you an animal, I can uh, kill you for my food. Uh, this is false identification, false ego, and a, fa a false sense of proprietorship. That means uh, we are, somebody on this level is totally convinced that Krishna is the only proprietor. Nothing belongs to us, everything belongs to Krishna. So surrendering one's body and being free and free from this false identification. Then manasastat swarup patvam. They, uh, they have a natural inclination. Uh, the natural inclination of such a devotee's mind is to surrender. That means uh, they even mentally, they are fully convinced and they're offering their mind in the service of Krishna by constantly remembering the Lord. So there's constant remembrance of the Lord. There's intense attachment to the Lord. There's devotion to the Lord, free from false proprietorship, free from ego, right? and one's body is completely uh, surrendered to the Supreme Lord. Then the, another statement says, whatever might be my situation with regard to the body and worldly conditions, whatever might be the type of character I am endowed with, I dedicate here and now my entire self so immaterial of the circumstance, the surroundings, Atmani Vedana means one really offers oneself to the Supreme Lord. This is full surrender, full uh, or self-surrender, self-dedication, giving oneself to the Supreme Lord. Shichit Mahaprabhu uh, describes this principle. This is uh, the highest level that one can surrender to the Lord giving one's independence to the Lord. My Lord, you do as you wish. You can use me as you wish. Why? Because I am the proprietor, I am the property of the Supreme Lord. Just like a stick. When, when somebody takes a stick, that stick is an instrument. And that stick can be used in whichever way the person wants to use the stick. Now, the stick is an instrument and can be a perfect instrument in the hands of the owner. It's not glorious because the stick does not have a separate, uh, does not have separate consciousness and separate independence. Whereas if someone surrenders to the Supreme Lord like a stick, 
That's why the sannyasis, they carry a danda. Uh, and the danda has three different uh, sticks, meaning I offer my body, mind, and words to the Supreme Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord can do whatever he wants. So one becomes an instrument in the hands of the Lord, fully surrendered to the Supreme Lord. We find Srila Prabhupada was a perfect example. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada taught us uh, these highest principles of surrendering to the Supreme Lord. By his example, uh, he used his mind, his body, his words, uh, his complete self was dedicated to the service of the Supreme Lord and his spiritual master. Complete self-surrender. Nothing for oneself. Prabhupada never used anything for his sense gratification. Even when devotees wanted to build, or, you know, Prabhupada wanted to build temples and the uh, the the uh, Prabhupada was always um, interested in serving the Supreme Lord. He didn't think, okay, I'm building a temple and here's my house. Uh, make sure my house got this, got the size, etc. No, Prabhupada was not interested. In fact, he was building the temple. He was laying everything for the temple. And he, uh, he, his house, his residence was not even in the picture. He wasn't even thinking about it. But the devotees, Notice that Prabhupada you know, was never interested in his own residence. It was always about Krishna and service to Krishna. So the devotees were saying, no, Prabhupada, we should have your room here. And we should have these things in the room. So they did it as an offering to Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada was never interested in his own uh, you know, uh, arrangements for himself. It was simply for Krishna. And whatever Krishna wanted to arrange for him, uh, he accepted. So full surrender. So reason for surrendering. If we consider what are the reasons for surrender? And generally, Srila Bhakti Thakur describes people initially surrender out of fear. It's like the lowest type of or lowest level, lowest reason for surrendering out of fear. Oh, I better surrender to Krishna uh, because if I don't surrender, you know, I'm going to suffer. You know, I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to suffer my sinful reactions. So therefore, I better uh, surrender. You know, it's, it's God-fearing. Many religious systems uh, propagate this principle. Surrender otherwise. Dot, dot, dot. So this is the first level, the lowest level of or reason for surrendering. Then higher than this are those that surrender due to profit. They have, you know, they may surrender because they want something from the Lord. I, you know, my Lord, I surrender to you because you're going to give me a nice job. You're going to give me a car. You're going to give me a nice wife. You're going to give me uh, you know, opulence. So there's profit. So this is like the, the karmis, the materialists. They would be religious because they want something in return. God is the order supplier. This is the next level of uh, surrendering. Uh, higher than that is a dutiful surrender. Just like uh, when we chant, we're chanting uh, because we have made a vow. It's my duty. I'm a devotee. I'm a servant of God. Uh, so out of duty, we are serving and surrendering to the Supreme Lord, which is a higher level of surrender. But the highest level of surrender is demonstrated by Mother Shoda. She is not serving Krishna because of fear. She is not serving Krishna because she wants something in return. In fact, her, her consciousness is Krishna can't give me anything. I'm Krishna's mother. I'll provide for Krishna. This is her level of love. She's not serving even out of duty. She's serving out of uh, the highest level of pure love. So this is the highest level. When one comes to this level, uh, then naturally the process of full surrender is natural. In the other levels, there will always be something that will keep you, that will anchor you from surrendering. Your 
own hidden agendas, your material desires, your false ego. Why should I surrender? Who, who's Krishna for, you know, that I should surrender to him? I'm not going to bow my head down. Sometimes people would challenge. I don't bow down to anyone. And Prabhupada would say, you will bow down to death. Everybody, everybody has to bow down to death. And not just, you know, bow down dandavats, full dandavats, you have to. So, this is the reality. It's a beautiful verse in the Vara Purana. If my devotee is unable to remember me at a time of death because of disturbance felt within the body at that time, then I shall remember my devotee and take him back to my supreme abode. Because of this self-surrender, when one fully gives oneself to Krishna, Krishna fully gives himself to the devotee. And there's this beautiful loving bond between uh, the devotee and the Supreme Lord. Self-surrender starts with a clear understanding of the Lord. Without understanding the Lord and the beautiful and wonderful qualities of Krishna, it becomes very difficult to surrender. Because somebody can ask you, well, why do you want to surrender to Krishna? Therefore, we should know Krishna's qualities, Krishna's attributes. And once we know Krishna's attributes, his glorious attributes, then it becomes easy to surrender. An example is given in Chaitanya Chatamrita by Haridas, Shila Haridas Thakur. In Chaitanya, in Chaitanya Chatamrita, Antya Lila, verses uh, 353 onwards, Mahaprabhu and Namachari Haridas Thakur discuss about how will the people of Kali Yuga, who would predominantly be engaged in killing cows and Brahmanical culture, be liberated. Namachari Haridas Thakur, glorifying the potency of the holy name of the Lord, said that there is indeed hope for even such souls because they are accustomed to saying haram, haram, O Lord Ramachandra. So uh, they saying haram, which is in uh, Arabic, uh, abominable, abominable. They will very easily be delivered by this namabas. Namachari Harira Stakur, the authority on the chanting of the holy name said, the chanting of the Lord's name to indicate something other than the Lord is an instance of Namabas. Even when the holy name is chanted in this way, its transcendental power is not destroyed. Even a Malacha who has been killed by the task of a boar and who cries in distress again and again, Haram, Haram, attains liberation. What then to speak of those who chant the holy name with veneration and faith? So if the holy name is chanted even indirectly, even inattentively, even unknowingly, even with broken syllables, one gets the mercy of the holy name, one gets the benefit, and one gets liberated. What to talk about somebody who's chanting the Lord's name with faith, veneration, dedication, to love Krishna? No doubt, no doubt. They will get the supreme mercy of Krishna. So in the chat, I'd like you to type, let me know, what qualities of Krishna attracts you to surrender to Krishna? What is it of Krishna that you individually have decided to surrender to him in terms, in terms of his qualities. Please share in the chat. Salami so says, his mercy for whatever little you do with love and devotion. Very good. Thank you. Any others? Nimesh says, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, 
uh, his Tribunga Lalita form with Radhawani. Nice, his beauty. Three bending form with Shimati Radhawani. Mukun says his transcendental pastimes. Nice, Hemavati Radhika says most beautiful and compassionate. Never forgets even little that we do. Very good. Any others? So every one of us, Patna Lek, Leko Gopi says his intelligence as topmost engineer of the world. Nice. Amrita Bika says assurance of peace and protection. Good. Lorraine says uh, not cut naughtiness and childlike nature. Nice. Yes, very good. Uh, Mukun says, looking after and serving his cows. Hamavati Radhika says, he gave us Srila Prabhupada. Very nice. Yes. Wonderful. Now, it's important that we ourselves are convinced of Krishna's supreme qualities. And we should also compare his qualities with those in the material world because we surrender to people in the material world. And when we get disappointed, we should look and turn towards Krishna. For example, in the material world, we are exploited. Krishna will never ever exploit. The, the, the word exploit does not exist in Krishna's vocabulary, in Krishna's consciousness, in his whole being, exploitation does not exist. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada even one time told the, told the devotees, don't even trust me, I can exploit you. I can cheat you. Uh, trust Krishna, he will never cheat you. He will never exploit you. So just that quality is exemplary, is amazing. To surrender to someone that will never ever cheat you that will never, ever exploit you. How wonderful. Just those qualities uh, will give you peace and serenity because you know, you know, because sometimes you, you surrender to someone or you have a relation with someone and you don't know whether they got a knife behind your back. And in most cases, it's, it's better if somebody shows you the knife. At least you know they got a knife. But if somebody is trying to be your friend in the name of being a friend and then showing you a knife behind your back uh, or not showing you or having a, holding a knife behind your back, uh, that's even worse. Gratitude. In this material world, we do so much for people. Yet, people won't even say thank you. Or you do so much and they'll say you're still not doing enough. Krishna. Uh, he's Kritagnya. He's absolutely grateful to such a degree that even if you do a little service to Krishna, he never ever forgets that little service. This is Krishna, such an amazing personality. And uh, as uh, many of you have shared, Krishna's qualities are unlimited. His personality, as we surrender more to chanting the holy name, the holy name will reveal Krishna's qualities. And the more the holy name reveals, and we get revelation of Krishna's qualities, naturally we will fall more and more and more in love with this most adorable, most loving, most all-attractive, most sweetest, most kindest, most grateful, most compassionate, uh, most merciful personality in creation. And uh, that is why for a pure devotee to fully surrender is, one, is wonderful and it's uh, natural because uh, Krishna is uh, bringing out that love. One wants to give oneself to such a person. We find uh, in devotional circles, 
uh, if we find a friend or we find a, uh, a devotee that has minute traits of this, we want to please that, just like sometimes the spiritual master, you want to please, the, you want to go all out to please the spiritual master. You want to go all out uh, to you know, serve the spiritual master. So Krishna, uh, he's, he's, he has the total, totality of all wonderful and glorious qualities. So here are some qualities of the self-surrendered soul. Faith in the infinite capacity of the Lord is to be found within such dedication. They're totally, absolutely convinced of Krishna's infinite capacity. For them, Krishna can do anything. That is why even Srila Prabhupada said, impossible is in a fool's dictionary. When Prabhupada uh, told them to print Chaitanya Charitamrita, all 17 volumes in two months, they said impossible because it took, it was taking them two months, uh, two to three months to do one volume. Prabhupada said 17 in two months. I mean, it, if you go to a publisher and you say, okay, publisher, I got 17 volumes to print. Um, you know, one volume takes two, three months. I need 17 volumes. They'll tell you 17 times two. That's it. And you tell them, oh, can I get it in two months? They'll say, go fly a kite. You know, what do you think? You're crazy. But that's, you know, that's what the devotee thought. Impossible. Prabhupada immediately told them, impossible is a fool's dictionary. Why? Because they have firm faith in the infinite capacity of the Lord. If the Lord wants, he can do anything. Nothing is impossible. And Prabhupada had that implicit faith in the Supreme Lord. And the devotees had implicit faith in Prabhupada's words. That if Prabhupada is saying it, well, then... I guess somehow it's going, we don't know how, but somehow it will happen. And sure enough, it was a marathon, but they made it happen. It, you know, they published two months. They published all the volumes. Dedicated souls perceives that he is merely an instrument in the hands of the Supreme Lord. We mentioned that. So that's another quality. They're completely uh, in the hands of Krishna. As Prabhupada said, I'm... Not the puppet in your hands. Make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. As you wish, you make me dance. This is uh, being an instrument in the hands of Krishna. They're not thinking I'm the doer. I'm doing it. Uh, I'm serving. I'm so great. Just see what I've done. No, nope. That false ego is not there. They're completely convinced Krishna is doing it. My Guru Maharaj is doing it, not me. They're using me as an instrument, but actually it's all them. They are doing it. Prabhupada always had this consciousness. Even when the reporter said, Swamiji, you've spread Krishna cons all over the world. And Prabhupada said, no, I didn't do anything. My Guru Maharaj, Krishna, they have spread. And hypocrisy cannot show its face in the light of such a heart's revelation. There is no hypocrisy. There's no diplomat diplomatic behavior. They, uh, what's inside is outside. They're an open book. They don't have a private and public life. Mm -hmm. in, the, in, in front of the public, they act in, in a certain way and at home, they act in a certain way. No, self-surrendered soul, inside and outside, completely surrendered. Within such surrender, there is no other conception but Govinda in every thought, word and deed. They sing Krishna everywhere. Indeed, one's worshipful deity is seen everywhere. Rejecting, rejection of all false motives facilitates continuous attachment for the Lord. They have no other motive of being attached to Krishna. They don't want anything from Krishna. It's not like, okay, Krishna, give me happiness, remove my suffering, please give me this. No, I want to be powerful. Please give me followers. I want money. Nothing. They are absolutely dedicated to this. They've given themselves to the Supreme Lord and they don't want anything in return. And therefore, their attachment to the Supreme Lord keeps increasing. Shichit Mahaprabhu gave us this beautiful prayer. I'm not a Brahmana. I'm not a Kshatriya. I'm not a Vaishya. Nor a Sudra. Nor am I a Brahmachari. 
a high, uh, householder, a vanaprastha sannyasi. I identify myself only as the servant of the servant of the servant of the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna, the maintainer of the gopis. He is like an ocean of nectar and is the, is the cause of universal transcendental bliss. He is always existing with prayers. So this is the only identification, the servant of the servant of the servant of Lord Krishna, the maintainer of the gopis. This was uh, the identification that Shri Mahaprabhu came to teach us by his own personal example. So as we covered in Sharanagati, these 50 songs, uh, we're going to be covering Atmani Vedanam, self-submission, self-surrender, and there's eight songs in uh, this category. So uh, let's go through those eight songs. So the first song, I have earned neither piety nor knowledge. Overwhelmed by sensual pleasures, I have cheated myself and now see only darkness in all directions. O oh Lord, the fountain head of all mercy, I surrender myself at your lotus feet. Kindly show me your compassion. It is your promise that one who takes refuge, <coughs> one who takes refuge in you will know no dangers or fear. For a sinner like me, there is no other shelter. I beg you now for your infinite grace. Oh, when will I know freedom from desire and thus become yours? You are eternally to be served. I am your eternal servant, and that is the sum, that is the sum of our penitent's devotional mood. So he's accepting that uh, uh, he was over, you know, he's accepting his past in terms of he was engaged in sense gratification, overwhelmed by that, cheated. Uh, and he was seeing darkness in all directions. And now he's recognized that for this sinner, uh, there is only one shelter, and that is Krishna. And he's begging Krishna, please make me yours. Mm -hmm. So in this way, Srila Bhaktakura is praying. And uh, it's interesting that we can use these songs as our own song. Srila Bhaktakura is uh, placing himself, even though he's a Nitya Siddha, pure devotee of the Lord, eternal associate of the Lord, is placing himself as a conditioned soul right, to offer prayers and to teach us you know, the type of prayer that we can offer to the Supreme Lord. And if we cannot compose prayers, we, uh, songs, we can have take adopt any of these songs and uh, place ourselves mm -hmm. instead of Shila Bhakti and Taco, we can place ourselves mm -hmm. in that song and we can offer the song to the Supreme Lord you know, with trying to cultivate the mood that Shila Bhakti and Taco is trying to portray. The lotus feet of the Lord so wonderful that whoever takes shelter under them immediately becomes purified. Second song. How much more shall I tell you of my shameful story? There is no sin which I have not committed thousands and thousands of times. My life in this world has been one of affliction and torment as a result of those sins. Whom will I blame but myself? At the time, I did not consider the consequences. Now, in the aftermath, aftermath, I seek to be safe. So very important point. All our suffering is caused by ourselves. We are the only ones to be blamed, nobody else. Even though uh, the material energy will use other individuals uh, and uh, other uh, events and situations to deliver my sinful reactions, but it is because of my own sinful reactions that I'm getting what I deserve. Therefore, uh, we should be very careful to blame anyone. They simply instruments to deliver what we have sown. And knowing that, uh, we are very attentive, uh, very cautious of the act or of all every single action, including every single thought, because even thoughts are actions. Whatever we think, we are getting back as a reaction. And uh, pure pure devotees, uh, they are cautious of the thoughts, the actions, and the words. 
And not only are they cautious of them, they offer them in the service of Krishna. After judging my sins, you should punish me, for I deserve to suffer the pangs of rebirth in this world. I only pray that as I wander through repeated births and deaths, my mind may ever dwell at your lotus feet in the company of Vaishnavas. Srila Bhaktan Thakur is teaching us, yes, I'm, I'm, I've left to suffer for my, react, my sinful reactions. But my Lord, I, I don't mind suffering because I've obviously engaged in those sinful activities and I deserve to be punished. But uh, even if I come back and I have to uh, take birth, please allow me to always have the association of devotees. I offer you this judicious prayer. My heart's false pride has gone far away. Oh, you who are so kind to the meek, your pure mercy has become Bhaktivinoda's only hope. So there's hope for every single one of us. Uh, there's hope even for the Malachas when they chant Haram, Haram. Therefore, there's hope for every living entity. By surrendering and praying for the causeless mercy of the Lord, the devotee can progress on the path of complete self-realization. Song three. Mind, body, and family, whatever may be mine, I have surrendered at your lotus feet, O youthful son of Nanda. In good fortune or in bad, in life or death, all my difficulties have disappeared by choosing, by choosing those feet of yours as my only shelter. Slay me or protect me as you wish, for you are the master of your eternal servant. If it is your will that I be born again, then may it be in the home of your devotee. May I be born again, even as a worm, so as long as I may remain your devotee. I have no desire to be born as Brahma, averse to you. I yearn for the company of the, that devotee who is completely devoid of all desire for worldly enjoyment or liberation. Father, mother, lover, son, Lord, protector, and husband, you are everything to me. Thakur Bhakti Nath says, O Kana, please hear me. O Lord of Radha, you are my life and soul. We shall always pray to Krishna that uh, we are weak and Maya is very strong. So seek for his protection in every step so Maya may not inflict upon us her trident in injuries. Fourth song, whatever I am, whatever I possess, I offer at your lotus feet, O merciful Lord. I, know, I no longer belong to myself. I am exclusively yours. The soul inhabiting this mortal body has given up false ego attached to the word I, and now the eternal spiritual sense of being yours has entered his heart. All my possessions, body, brothers, friends, followers, and followers, wife, sons, personal belonging, house, and home, all of these I give you, for I have become your servant. Now I dwell in your house. You are the Lord of my house, and I, your most obedient servant. Your happiness is my only endeavor now. Whatever piety or sins were done by me, my mind or deeds are no longer mine, for I am redeemed. My desire has become one with yours. From this day, Bhaktivana Thakur has no other identity. Very, very wonderful. When you give up your identity, when you give up the false ego, and you take up the real ego, I am a servant of Krishna. And then when you surrender, when you're a servant of Krishna, you own nothing. Even what you have, your, your karma, your piety, and your sins, because you've given yourself to Krishna, it's Krishna's. And everything that's related to your, to your body, uh, you've given to Krishna, therefore it's Krishna's. So with this consciousness, Srila Bhaktan Thakur is praying very, very wonderfully mm -hmm. that uh, my desires become one with yours. Whatever you do, uh, I'm happy with that. Nothing remains mine. Father, friend, brother, you are, you are even these to me. For, though, for whom I call friends, wives, sons, and daughters are all your servants and maidservants. Whatever care I take for them is only as it relates to you. If I continue to maintain my wealth, family members, home, and wife, it is because they are yours. 
I am merely, I am a mere servant. For your service, I will earn money and bear the expense of your household. I know neither good nor bad. I am merely, I merely serve. I am but a watchman who guards the property in your household. The exercise of my senses, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and touching is done according to your desire. I no longer do anything for my pleasure. But Bhaktivinoda says, your happiness is the essence of everything. So one is seeing all one's family members as Krishna's, and therefore one is understanding that I'm a, a caretaker of everything that the Lord has given. I'm not claiming them to be mine. I'm simply uh, a caretaker looking after them. And as caretakers of the Lord's paraphernalia uh, and property, there is no question of using them for my sense gratification. I am simply taking care and whatever pleasure the Lord wants from them, uh, it is my duty to uh, engage in that way to give pleasure uh, to the Lord. And Srila Bhaktivedan Taka says, I, have no longer, I no longer do anything for my own pleasure. So this is clearly uh, a sign that there is no false ego because in the material world, everything, or e everything that people do in this world, it's simply because of the pleasure that they're seeking. Very few people do things uh, for pleasing others. Even in the name of pleasing others, the bottom line is, uh, you know, you need to scratch my back. They still want something in return. Therefore, there's really, you know, no pure, pure, pure love in this material world. Yes, the closest that can be there is the mother's love for the child. But even when the mother is growing up the child, the mother has, uh, you know, a motive that yes, as you know, I'm sacrificing my life for the child. So when the child grows up, the child can become a doctor and the child will look after me and the child, you know, will do this and the child will do that and I'll be very happy. So the uh, parents are still uh, thinking of their uh, own pleasure. But a pure devotee of the Lord who's completely given himself to the Supreme Lord, he is not interested in his own pleasure. Yet we know uh, that he derives the greatest pleasure. Why? Because when you please Krishna, you also please uh, your own senses. Prabhupada gives the example. Uh, you water the root, the leaves get, leaves, branches, twigs, flowers, all get watered, all get nourished. So Krishna is the root. When you please Krishna, automatically, uh, you will feel that pleasure. In fact, it is described that the devotees of the Lord, uh, they feel uh, 10 million times more pleasure than Krishna in that exchange, loving exchange. And Krishna, the Supreme Lord, he gets bewildered that how come devotees experience far more pleasure than me? And I'm, I'm God, I'm meant to be the, uh, the Supreme. Therefore, he wants to also experience that pleasure. What is the pleasure that they experience? I'm feeling so much bliss. Just consider the bliss they must be feeling. And therefore, uh, he takes the mood of Shijit Mahaprabhu, comes, becomes a devotee to also experience that uh, supreme love, supreme bliss. Sixth song. In truth, all, the, all things belong to you. No jiva is owner of anything. Tiny soul wanders in this world, mistakenly thinking, I am this transitory body and everything related to this body is mine. Thus, he suffers sorrow and fear. The conditioned soul is falsely proud and considers everything attached to the words I and mine to be his treasures alone. Due to the same vanity, I fell into this world, floundering in the ocean of mundane existence like a drowning man. I suffered the pang pangs of rising and sinking in that ocean. I take shelter lotus feet which award fearlessness and dedicate myself to you on this day. The vanity of I and mine has left me now. May it never find a place within my heart. O oh Lord, please give me the strength 
that I may be able to keep the false conceptions of I and my far away. May the mood of self-surrender to the Supreme Lord remain firmly fixed in my heart and not prove to be a momentarily cleanliness of, for, of an elephant after a bath. Bhaktivinoda begs at the lotus feet of Lord Nichananda for the grace which delivers one from all false pride. So this I and my, this is uh, the, the danger, this is the obstacles. You know, I did this, this is my service, this is my results, I, you know, I'm so powerful. You know, once, one wants recognition, because if, you know, I did this, therefore I need recognition. But if you understand that actually I'm simply an instrument, and if they don't recognize, you, you accept, well, I'm an instrument. Krishna's all credit goes to Krishna. And whether they glorify or not, credit's always uh, for Krishna. And then another uh, very wonderful point Srila Bhaktan Thakur makes here uh, is that uh, he's uh, praying that this I and mind, this false conception never ever you know, take place again in his heart. Because uh, one, also, one has to constantly be aware and uh, cautious that Maya can penetrate it always. If you give a little cap to Maya, she can enter. Prabhupada said, idle minds are devil's workshop. Soon as you are idle, soon as you give a little gap, Maya can take advantage. And he does not want this mood of self surrender to be flickering. Like an elephant that goes, bathes in the uh, river, comes out and immediately puts dirt. So he doesn't want it like that to be moment, momentary. He wants to be eternal, constant. So it's not, and anything that's constant, that's eternal, means it's solid. It's, it's uh, one is not uh, faking it. One is not pretending. Whereas if uh, one is just in, you know, in the name of self-surrender, one is, you know, speaking, etc., cetera, uh, then it can be very moment, momentarily, as soon as the obstacle is there, right? they say everybody's a price. So as soon as the obstacle is there to distract one, uh, one can be swayed. Song seven, I submit at your lotus feet, O Lord, what I am, what I, that, sorry. I submit at your lotus feet, O Lord, that I am fallen and wretched, a fact known to three worlds. There is no sinner more sinful than me. In the entire material creation, there is no offender whose offenses equal mine. But attempting to clear myself of all these sins and offenses I put to shame, I am put to shame and beg your forgiveness. All this is understood by you. Of whom Will I take shelter except for you, O son of the king of Raja? You are the lord of all lords. This world is yours, and you pervade all things in it. You forgive the offenses committed against you. You alone are the shelter of those who have gone astray. Apart from you, what else exists, O merciful lord? Those like me who have offended you will know no peace until achieving a shelter. Bhakti will not take shelter in you and surrenders himself at your lotus feet on this very day. We were making the point yesterday in Sunday Love Feast. Yashila Bhaktakur is praying, there is no sinner more sinful than me in the entire creation. There is no offender whose offenses equal mine. So he's praying in this way. And we may also say that, we may think that, but the pure devotees, they don't think these statements. They feel, they actually, uh, because of their humility, which we're gonna cover tomorrow, this type of uh, qual qualities and attitudes manifest. Uh, we may just mentally think, yeah, Prabhu, I'm very fallen. As soon as someone traps your, traps your toes, immediately you get upset, you want to hit them in the face. You know, you don't know whose toes, toes you tramped. Eh? Be careful, you don't know me. I am, I'll get my, uh, you know, this I and my will immediately uh, flap uh, because it's mental. It's not really heart deep. Right? It's just mind deep. And the mind is very flickering. So the pure devotees, they don't uh, live on the mental plane. 
They don't live on the chariot of the mind. They live from the heart. They live uh, deep from uh, the, the depths of their heart. When you become more tolerant than a tree and more humble than a blade of grass, then you can truly serve Krishna. And the last song, I have become supremely joyful by surrendering myself at your lotus feet. Unhappiness has gone away and there are no more anxieties. I see joy in all directions. This is the result of Atmani Vedanas. Consider, if you want to be, or if you take somebody else's department that controls different situations, you will always be in anxiety. If it's not your nature and you have to take somebody else's role, you will always be in anxiety. In the material world, it's not our role to control. In the material world, it's not our role to enjoy. In the material world, it's not our role to be proprietors. That department or those departments, right, to be a controller and enjoy propriety is Krishna's. So if we are taking that role, we will always be in anxiety. Our role is simply to be surrendered at the lotus feet of Krishna as instruments, as his energies, and let him uh, do his uh, portfolio. And when Krishna does what he's uh, capable of doing, and we simply fall at his feet, we will be very peaceful and happy. Your lotus feet are the reservoir, reservoirs of immortal nectar, where one may live free from sorrow and fear. I have found peace there now, and I have given up the fear of worldly existence. I shall render in service your house, your household, and not endeavor to enjoy the fruits of that service, but rather I shall strive for whatever pleases you, fully devoted to your lotus feet. This statement very, very old is very deep. I shall render service in your household and not endeavor to enjoy the fruits of that service. If you really contemplate this statement. Atmani Vedanam, I'm surrendering completely to you. And I'm rendering service not for my enjoyment. We find that because we're so conditioned in the material world to do things for enjoyment, when we come into the spiritual arena, we also want to do things for enjoyment. Like we uh, you know, want to have kirtan for enjoyment. We want to cook a feast for enjoyment. This propensity is there. The pure devotees, not that they don't enjoy. Susukam kartum aviyam. They enjoy. But the enjoyment is first and foremost for the pleasure of Krishna. Then we enjoy. Whereas in the conditional stage, it's let me enjoy while I am trying to serve Krishna, but it's really for my senses. I like the kirtan, I like the and I like the prasad. So it's about what I like uh, instead of what Krishna likes. So we can see that uh, you know, and it's at least glorious that one is doing it in relation to Krishna. One is still engaged in devotional service, then not. But uh, sometimes the devotees would ask, you know, how to develop more, you know, greater taste, for example, in kirtan. And I would respond, try not to enjoy the kirtan, which is an exact statement by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He's, he's rendering service, but not with the mentality to enjoy the fruits, to enjoy the service. The service is meant for Krishna's pleasure. And that, as we strive and we continue with the proper consciousness in devotional service, we will realize this more and more. And as we realize this more and more, as we offer more and more selfless service to Krishna, automatically we derive more pleasure. The material mind cannot appreciate this. It's far beyond material comprehension. Then how can you, you know, not enjoy and give pleasure to Krishna and enjoy? 
This is spiritual happiness. This is how spiritual happiness works because we are part and parcel of Krishna. When Krishna enjoys, we enjoy. This is how the living entity uh, is nourished and in, uh, experiences bliss. We've created the provision in this material world because we want to be lords. Therefore, we want to enjoy. We've taken Krishna's position. Someone who surrenders to Krishna, at Krishna Atman in Vedanam, he knows his position very, very clear. Troubles encountered in your service shall be the cause of great happiness. For in your devotional service, joy and sorrow are equally great riches. Don't destroy the misery of ignorance. So whenever there is trouble, it's disturbing. For Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, this is great happiness. This is great riches. I have completely forgotten all past history by feeling great joy in my mind. I am most certainly yours and you are indeed mine. What need is there for any other treasure? If we want to achieve the greatest treasure in creation, it is Krishna. Just like we may get something in this material world and we will say, this is my phone, this is my car, this is my house. But the day we can say Krishna is mine, this is the perfection of human life. This is perfection of the spirit soul. And not only do I say, should I, when, when, I, when I say Krishna is mine, but when Krishna says you are mine, or in this case, uh, Krishna, you, know, you, you, you understand I'm yours, both ways. When you ex uh, own Krishna and Krishna owns you, then that is the epitome of pure love, of devotional service. There is no greater treasure than that. So that's what we're praying. Bhakti not diving into the ocean of bliss devotes all his efforts for your service and dwells in your house according to your wishes. This is Atmani Vedam, self-surrender. Do as you wish, my Lord. However you want me to act, I will act. False ego means mistaken identity. When we become servants of Krishna, we become free from false ego. So that is why we fall flat at the lotus feet of Krishna. Now, my Lord, do as you wish. You can embrace me, you can handle me roughly, you can neglect me, you can do whatever you want. I am yours, and this is Atmani Vedan. So we're going to uh, share pastime of Lord Jagannath uh, with uh, uh, Dasya Bore, a wonderful, amazing devotee. And uh, we see how when the devotee of the Lord fully surrenders to the desire of the Lord. The Lord wishes, the Lord wants to reciprocate. Uh, when that connection is there, uh, when Krishna is yours and you are Krishna's, then naturally that bond uh, means a bond of reciprocation. You want to please the Lord and the Lord wants to please you. You want to offer yourself to the Lord and the Lord wants to offer himself to you. You want to serve the Lord and the Lord wants to serve you. That reciprocation, that bond is there. And that bond is not with just any person. That bond is a bond with Lord Jagannath, the Lord of the universe. So it's not an ordinary bond. It's not an ordinary relationship. It's a very special, very unique, very rare relationship. So let's hear. Uh, this reciprocation between uh, someone who's fully surrendered Atmani Vedanam uh, and uh, the supreme shelter Krishna himself. <laughs> Dasya Bori in Lord Jagannatha. There is a place called Baligram, which is around two kilometers away from Jagannathpuri. 
very poor man but very satisfied satvika uh, who was living with his wife no children so with bare minimum necessities like adrushta labha santushtaha we hear in bhagavad gita he has practically like that whatever with whatever will of the lord comes he was satisfied with meager earnings in that itself he used to worship lord and maintain his family he is basically a weaver category which is traditionally in a lower sect of the society caste wise in a weaver's family so he used to make cloth and by selling cloth whatever minimum comes in that minimum itself he used to associate with vaishnava serve some something serve some opportunity for them and he used to sit with them and uh, understand about krishna katha try to understand about krishna katha so he was doing all these activities but being not educated so even though when he is associated with the devotees he could not understand the in, uh, intricate details because when they speak they speak in highest uh, terminology because when they converse in sanskrit or in a, a vedic perspective that was little above he said but he had strong faith and he used to simply sit and listen to their discourses slowly 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 when he started associating with the devotees he st- his heart became clean and he started able to experience love of god and all the vedic truth started revealing within himself and the revealing the, that final conclusion that lord jagannatha is the supreme personality of god that awareness came upon him so when his awareness came upon him in one day he thought let me go and have darshan of lord jagannatha and it is ratha yatra season whole world is coming to have darshan of jagannatha let me also go so he was standing on the grand road that's a huge road with so many people were there so he was like a small speck and from far distance he could see lord jagannatha and as soon as he saw lord jagannatha he paid obeisances there so then uh, he was engaged in in uh, meditation and like he was offering prayers 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 when lord jagannatha came so accidentally ratha will stop at the last point no and they will take maybe next day morning or something like that so then at that time he went in front of lord jagannatha and his heart felt prayers that offered and he became very sad so when jagannatha went inside after the ratha yatra program he came back to his village but when he came back to his village he is a different person now he is not like an earlier person so one day wife was serving him lunch she had asked him after washing his legs he sat down so she put a red pot with inside cooked rice on the top there is a spinach sibji black spinach so when she started serving she was, then she he saw the red pot with white rice on the center like spinach black spinach then he immediately remembered the eyes of lord jagannath then when he remembered like a red border like lord like jagannatha size will be like a red inside white and a small dot of black so he remembered jagannatha and he started chanting dancing singing and he is not eating the food why he saying eat eat he is simply crying laughing dancing and chanting then she she became very alarmed she went to neighborhood and caught brought all the elderly people and said see 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 how he is acting might be he had gone to jagannath puri and somebody did black magic on him and uh, he is uh, not responding then they all calm him down and they said what is happening he said this is like the eye of lord jagannatha how can i eat lord jagannatha's eyes and then they understood uh, he is of a very highest caliber and they initiate him they say you are from today your name is bali gramadas and they indicated to wife from today serve rice separately sabji separately don't mix everything then only he will eat and this principle worked and from that day onwards he is eating so when one particular time he became so much attracted to the lord he went into meditation and started uh, meditating on the lord so when he became in the night uh, he was thinking of the lord and he went to sleep thinking of the lord's lotus feet at the night lord appeared to him because lord could not tolerate what the devotee is going through lord jagannatha vanished from jagannath puri temple and he came to him and he gave him his audience and lord touched him as soon as lord touched him he woke up and his body fully activated and rejuvenated and he started offering prayers lord said i am very much satisfied by your bhakti i am only captured only by lord's uh, devotee's devotion and love i am not captured by rules regulations vedic mantras all these things are i am very much satisfied with your service i want to offer you a benediction as i said i am not interested in benediction i am only happy to have your darshan i please bless me 
that whenever I want, you give me your darshan. That is only I want. Whenever I feel to have your darshan, please be merciful that you can give me your darshan. Then Lord said, okay, I bless you. So whenever you come to Jagannath Puri, because lower caste people are not allowed to enter into the temple. So as you, whenever you see that Neeli Chakra, that Sudarshan Chakra, you can see my form in that Sudarshan Chakra. I will manifest you in that Sudarshan Chakra. And Lord vanished from there. So next he he also got initiated in one with one guru and uh, he started following all the Diksha principles, everything and all. He started wearing Kantimala, he started doing Japa, and all these basic principles also he was involved. So one day when he went to a Brahmana's house to deliver a cloth, there was one coconut tree with very big coconut, very nice attractive coconut. So as soon as he saw the coconut, he thought, let me offer to Lord Chakannatha such a nice coconut. So he went to that Brahmana after giving that cloth, he had asked, the, so there is one very good coconut. Can you say what is the price of that coconut? So that I would like to cut that amount from my amount. So that you can give me the rest of the amount and I can take that coconut to offer to Lord Chakannatha. That Brahmana was a greedy person. Then he thought, no, 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 that coconut is very special. So it will be costing more than the amount what I am supposed to give you. So for your purpose, I will do one thing. I will level up the both amounts and you can take that coconut. And this is the only means of survival for him. Whatever little cloth he could sell, that money comes. But he thought, for the service of the Lord, everything I am okay. Then he said, okay, please take. And he took that coconut. He came back to his house. So when he came back to his house, he was thinking how to send it to Lord Chakannath. So there he saw in front of his house one Brahmana was walking towards Jagannath Puri. So he, he went and uh, requested that Brahmana, please give this coconut with uh, one message to Lord Jagannatha. So you take this coconut and you say, you offer it like this and you say, uh, as soon as uh, you repeat my message, this is a coconut sent by Dasya Bhavya. So please take this coconut. So if Lord takes this coconut, okay, no problem. If Lord doesn't accept that coconut, please bring it back. And that Brahmana was thinking, how will Lord come and take this coconut? It is like chaili something or like a foolish thing he is speaking. Okay, but he took his coconut and he went to Jagannatha, had his darshan, offered his prayers. When he wanted to return, then he remembered Dasya's uh, coconut. So he was standing near Garudastamba. So this Brahmana was standing near Garudastamba, then he took out this coconut in, hand, in his palm and as uh, explained by Dasya, he started offering the statement. He said, this is a coconut sent by our dear devotee Dasya Bhaurya. So please accept this the astonishment of all the people, Lord Jagannatha extended his hand from the altar to the, up to Garudastamba and picked that coconut and took it back. Everybody were very surprised and everybody thought this is much is a special devotee where Lord is doing all these uh, miracles. So then he came back and he, he blessed to Dasya Bhavari. He said, you are such a great devotee. Your family has become purified. Your father has, your forefathers have become purified and your entire generations have become purified that Lord Jagannatha had accepted your request. Then after some days again, uh, one day when he was coming, after doing some business, he had some money and it was a mango season. He saw one mango vendor in a basket. He was selling mangoes, very juicy, very long, very pulpy mangoes. So with whatever money he had, he had purchased 40 mangoes and he thought, let me offer to Lord Jagannatha. So he covered the mango basket with a cloth and he started walking towards Jagannath Puri. So when he reached the uh, outside uh, Simhadwara, all the pandas, they are fighting there. I will offer to Lord Jagannath, I will offer. So he said, I don't want any of you, I need none. Then they said, how you can offer? Without pandas, how you can offer to the deity? Then he said, no problem, just, just watch. Then uh, he, he outside, the, he took two mangoes, and he started offering to the Sudarshan Chakra. And as soon as he started offering to the Sudarshan Chakra, two hands came, picked that mangoes and vanished. So people are only seeing mangoes are being vanished. So by that time, uh, two two he is removing, uh, at the end all the mangoes in the baskets were finished. And all the people, surrounding people and pandas were asked, where did these mangoes go? Is this some black magic or something? What is this happening? And he said, the Lord has eaten these mangoes and he is very much satisfied. Then all the people ran inside the altar. They saw all the mangoes everywhere, skin and uh, seeds everywhere around the mango. Mangoes around the altar and uh, uh, mango juice dripping from the lips of Lord Jagannatha onto his dress and everywhere. His body is full of that mango juice. And then they all understood that he is not a common devotee, he is a devotee of a superior nature. So in that way, Lord, even though he is wood in nature, he is performing something divine activities. And devotees also, when they come to the spiritual platform, 
ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಹಾಯಸ್ಯ ಹರೇರ್ ದಾಸ್ಯರ್ ಕರ್ಮಣ ಮನಸ ಆಗಿರ ನಿಕಲಸ ಅಪಿ ಅವಸ್ಥಾಸು ಜೀವನ್ ಮುಕ್ತ ಸಹ ಉಚ್ಚತೆ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಟೈನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಭೂತ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಸಿಪ್ರಿಕೇಟ್ ಟು ದ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಸೊ ವೈಲ್ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸೊ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲ್ ಇನ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ here uh, one of the songs by shilabak teacher march uh, of shilabak uh, by shilabak about uh, ganpako in terms of atmani vedanam <laughs> ಮುಕ್ತ 
surrendered at your lotus feet, O beautiful son of Nanda. So self-surrender, self-submission, Atmanivedana means I'm offering my body, I'm offering my mind, I'm offering my words, I'm offering everything that I have. This is self-surrender. We may render some service with our body, but we may not offer our mind. Now we may offer our body and mind, but we may still have so many things that we still keep. So self-surrender, self-submission means, or full surrender means offering everything. In good fortune or in bad, in life or in death, all my difficulties have disappeared by accepting those feet of yours as my only shelter. So if there's no condition of when I surrender and once I've surrendered, it doesn't matter whether there's good fortune, um, bad fortune, whether you know, in life or death, whether it's difficulties or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, because one has taken full shelter of the Supreme Lord, uh, one will be sheltered from uh, all aspects of life. Slay me or protect me as you wish, for you have full authority over your eternal servant. So this is how one is giving up uh, one's uh, self completed to Krishna, not protecting oneself, not concerned about oneself, 
because one has firm faith and full faith that Krishna will do whatever is best and whatever gives him pleasure, so be it. One is constantly in that mood that I am Krishna's servant and whatever is meant for Krishna's pleasure, that is my greatest pleasure. If it is your wish that I be born again, then may I be, take birth in the home of your devotee. The Bhakti Bhaktakar is praying that even if I have to take a birth, birth again for whatever reason in this material world, always want to be in the association of devotees, and be in the home of a devotee. In that way, one will constantly be hearing, associating with Krishna. May I be born again, even as a worm, as long as I remain your devotee. I have no desire to be born as a Brahma averse to you. So a wonderful uh, prayer. Even if you give me a post of Brahma and, it, and I'm averse, I don't want to, I would have to want that. But even if I take birth as a worm, I'm happy as long as I remain a devotee. This is glorious. So he's totally convinced that my only desire is to be uh, your devotee. Surrender to your lotus feet. I yearn for the company of that devotee who is completely devoid of all desire for worldly enjoyment or liberation. Those devotees who are completely detached from any material motive, all they want is simply to serve Krishna. They don't want to make a business arrangement with Krishna. They want pure love, pure reciprocation with Krishna. Father, mother, lover, son, lord, preceptor, and husband, you are everything to me. Bhaktivinoda sa says, O Kana, please hear me. O Lord of Radha, you are my life and soul. So self-surrender, offering uh, oneself, the <coughs> fruit of workers, they are interested in uh, fruit of results. They want to uh, have a relation with God but they want to bargain. They want something in return. They want to control God uh, with results. The yogis or the jnanis, they want to control God uh, with their knowledge. The yogis, they want to control God uh, with their mystic powers. But the devotee, he simply wants to offer his love uh, to the Supreme Lord and be controlled by the Supreme Lord with loving devotion. In Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada says in the purport 646, when the linking up process is predominantly in fruit of activity, this is called karma yoga. When it is predominantly empiric, it is called jnana yoga. When it is predominantly in devotional relationship with the Supreme Lord, it is called bhakti yoga. So the pure devotee simply wants uh, to surrender completely uh, to the wish, to the desire, to the will of Krishna with love. It's not like he's forced. It's not like he has a hidden agenda. Right? Love is uh, the force that allows him to surrender to the Supreme Lord. A person who is fully Krishna conscious and is fully satisfied by his acts in Krishna conscious no longer has any duty to perform. When you surrender to the Supreme Lord, uh, you have no duties to perform. Why? Because now uh, your duties are all in relation to Krishna. However, Krishna wants to engage you in his service for his pleasure, for his pastimes, uh, for, uh, he, for, he, for how he wants to extend uh, his mercy. Uh, you simply, a puppet, you simply uh, in the hands of Krishna. And we see Prabhupada displayed this uh, total surrender in the desire of his Pochumas and desire of Shijat Mahaprabhu to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. And Prabhupada simply became an instrument. And when we become an instrument in the hands of Krishna, then inconceivable things can happen. Why? Because Krishna is unlimitedly powerful. When we try to do things on our own, uh, I'm doing things. I can do things, uh, then uh, you know, due to our skills, we may be able to do things, but it will always be limited. There'll always be shortcomings. But when we develop the attitude of simply depending, simply surrendering 
ourselves completely in the hands of Krishna and let Krishna right, make his magic, then it is the result is always glorious. The outcome is always glorious. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we feel completely blissful. So that brings us uh, to the end of session six. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments anyone has? Everyone's okay. All right, let's see. Rasa says, <clears throat> Rasa, Hare Krishna Bruji, thank you for the beautiful and impactful class. When you mentioned about enjoying prasad for our own pleasure, I was reminded how all, always for years you would mention that we should not add chilies into our prasad in abundance because Krishna is a little boy who loves sweets, not spicy and strong. Yesterday, I was also reminded of that. Yes. Uh, and that's, Bhakti Chirmaj always said, Krishna is a butter thief. He likes butter, he likes sweet things. So uh, yes, uh, offering too much chilies to Krishna, Bhakti said, you know, he doesn't like that. And in, in the spiritual world, Srimati Radhavani knows exactly what to cook for the pleasure of Krishna. It's not that Krishna doesn't eat chilies. He, in the midday Boga Arati, Krishna is holding chilies in his hand. So he eats chilies. The problem is uh, we want to offer what's pleasing to Krishna and not necessarily for ourselves. Now, nectar devotion does say that there are two types of offerings you can offer. One is offering that's pleasing to Krishna, which you offer. Just like if you want to offer to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you offer shak, because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu loves shak. Green, veg green, veg green vegetables. Uh, Robert said in, Go in Govardhan uh, um, Janmashtami, we should offer jackfruit. So uh, different Personalities have different tastes, so it's nice to offer. Uh, and second type of offering is what you like, which you can offer. Okay? So it is there, but that's also there because it allows us to be engaged in Krishna's service. As we advance more, uh, then it's more about what pleases Krishna, what pleases uh, the spiritual master, uh, what pleases the Vaishnavas. In that way, uh, the attitude becomes more focused on others than one's self. Okay. And uh, if there's devotion, then Krishna will definitely eat it. Doesn't matter you know, what it is, right? So if we have the devotion, great. Just like Vidura, when Vidura was offering, his wife was so you know, overwhelmed with Krishna and so much love was coming out that they were peeling the banana feeding Krishna the banana peel and throwing the banana. And Krishna was happily eating the banana peel with such love and such devotion. It was juicy and tasty. So Krishna can eat anything. Prabhupada says Krishna can eat fire. But that's on the very exalted level. So uh, we go in stages. Yes. Madhachana Siddhi, thank you very much for your feedback. Vidura says, I have still a lot to learn and practice. Mm -hmm. Me too. I have a long, long way to go, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I was last, uh, last week I was listening to uh, one of other Shiksha gurus and he was talking about maintenance, Krishna maintains. And he was sharing so many nice pastimes. I was thinking, Okay, looks like I'll have to do the next level of Sharanagati because there were so many wonderful pastimes 
you know, and that's the at least recovering a little foundation so that we can we can think and and that's why it's important to try to remember as much as we can so that we know okay these are the limbs of sharan gati this is the things i need to slowly do and then as we advance our devotional service going forward will be of a higher level and category because now we are practicing it with the six limbs in mind and we may be able to for example give a little of ourselves atma nivedanam a fraction of that more a little more sentiment one day we may uh, find ourselves let's say going to a shop fruit shop looking at a fruit and normally we would look at the fruit and say yeah i love that now we look at the fruit and say i like to offer it to krishna so we've advanced right slowly like that you'll see we'll be able to apply these principles of sharanagati more and more and like that we grow we grow we do the seminar again we grow we do the seminar again we keep growing and one day we pray to shila bhakti and thako we play to shila prabhupad we play pray to the vaishnavas we pray to the devotees and the lord that one day we will be able to live sharanagati and then when we speak we'll speak from realizations of actually living uh, sharanagati that will be another experience you know uh, we just think of a past time when we were going to ecstasy for one week just like uh, you know shila bhakti sirand march when he took shelter of gorkishas babaji march uh, after he, he back for his initiation and then gorkishas babaji march gave him initiation and i did describe that uh, one day he came and he fell at the feet of uh, his pochu master and his pochu master took his lotus feet and put it on his head and we're talking about the dust which is very conducive for spiritual life when shil gokesh maharaj babaji maharaj put his lotus feet on shil bhakti sir maharaj shil bhakti sir maharaj went into ecstasy he went into ecstasy for one year he was practically uh, you know like in he wasn't he wasn't there for you know he wasn't there at all he was in ecstasy for one full year this is the power this is the potency so yes we we definitely uh, i i can resonate with your sentiment you know it's like for me uh, i'm definitely far from sharanagati but the reason i'm doing this is so that at least i can educate myself what is this about let me learn you know it's like uh, what what and and that's the best way i learn i learn by sharing uh, i learn by because i have to go over the you know notes and try to extract you know some uh, knowledge about sharana gati then i have to compose it and then i have to try to share it so that way i learn it it goes into my tactic skull so that way hopefully you know something stays there and by krishna's mercy uh, we can try to apply yeah so uh, there's hope that's the beauty you know pra- prabhupad wants us to be fully uh, surrendered souls krishna wants us to be fully surrendered souls so on the other side there are well wishers and they blessing us they wishing now it's simply our intention as soon as we say yes the magic happens the more we say yes the magic we don't need to do anything much you know it's not so much the actions it's really the intention deep within as soon as we convince and we say yes krishna i'm yours yes krishna i want to surrender then krishna does everything then the magic happens so that's uh, the beauty when we really have the intention and the more we continue hearing uh, remembering uh, reminding ourselves that this is the goal this is where this is why we've come together we are uh, associating in practice and the time will come when we are so sate in pure love for krishna just consider shila bhakti not um shichit mahaprabhu when they would have like we have kirtan 
you know, devotees come together, we have kirtan. When uh, Shijin Mahaprabhu, when they had kirtan, they would have prem kirtan. They were kirtan with tears flowing from their eyes. So one day that time will come uh, when uh, the devotees come together uh, and they have prem kirtan. Uh, kirtan with, you know, they start to glorify Krishna with so much love that everybody is tearing. Torrents of rain, that uh, temple room becomes a swimming pool uh, full of uh, devotional tears. And anyone that touch those tears, they go into ecstasy. Uh, they get love of Krishna. So that's that's the gift that Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada came to give. So we have a beautiful journey ahead of us. The destination is beautiful. The journey is beautiful. Even with the ups and downs and even with the challenges, it is beautiful. Because if there's no challenges, uh, then it doesn't become you know, ex exciting to see, am I really making progress? Am I going through it? Right? If everything is easy sailing, uh, then we don't, you know, it doesn't become as exciting as if there is challenges. Because if you're convinced of the goal, then challenges become sweet. And challenges and obstacles don't become an obstacle. Uh, it's, it's really uh, there to allow you to surrender more to Krishna to, uh, so that he can uh, help you overcome the obstacles. So we in the same boat. All right. Amavati says, such a beautiful class filled with nectar, stunning slides and wonderful songs. Singing these songs help us surrender. And it's so nice to include in our daily practice. Thank you so much. Uh, we're so grateful. We feel like hearing more and more. Yes. Uh, Mother Lorraine saying, blessed with more nectar. Thank you. Jagannath Priya says, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for today's class. Thank you. Radhika says, thank you for wonderful class, Prabhu. I'm so, I, I'm so guilty of cooking prasad for my own sins instead of a Krishna but I will change uh, from now on. Yes, practice makes perfect. Slowly but surely. The beauty is at least you are eating Krishna Prasad. That's the beauty, right? At least you're offering, because remember that's, so it's not wrong. Uh, Krishna says, uh, whatever you do, whatever you offer, uh, you know, all your activities, do that as an offering to me. So if you're going to eat, no problem. Not that you mustn't eat. Eat, but first offer it to Krishna. In fact, in the early days when Prabhupada went to the West, um, he, he told him, he says, whatever you, you're going to accept, first offer it to Krishna, offer it to God. So then the next day, uh, or it was next like Sunday, people came with their clothes, uh, you know, different things, and they put it in front of the altar. Because Prabhupada told them, whatever you're going to get, you know, it's like, I'm going to wear new clothes. Okay, I'm going to first offer the clothes to Krishna. First offer. So this was the sentiment that they came with. And Prabhupada was very pleased. See, that's the sentiment. Yes, offer it to Krishna first. And then we take it. So it's not wrong that you are offering prasad or boga that you liked. Because that is the beginning of bhakti. That's the beginning of devotional service. If you like to eat a pizza, no problem. Offer that pizza to Krishna. Uh, you like to eat any sabjis? No problem. Offer it first to Krishna. Mm -hmm. And when you offer it to Krishna, uh, Prabhupada is very compassionate. He accepts it. He offers it to his Pochumasa with devotion. To his Pochuma devotion, in this way, it goes up the ladder of uh, Pochumasters right up to Radhawani, and they add the ingredient of devotion and they offer it to, Prabhupada, to Krishna. So it's not wrong. So don't feel, uh, Radhika, don't feel that it's, uh, don't feel guilty. Yeah, don't feel guilty. In fact, you should be happy that you did the right thing, right? Now, you know that there's another level of offering. And another level of offering is, let me try to offer what pleases Krishna. Now, you may not be able to do that every day because, uh, you know, your, your diet and Krishna's diet may be a little different. Just like if you keep offering too much butter to Krishna every day, then you will have to eat that butter every day and you're going to get cholesterol. Right? So uh, therefore, we still have to be practical in terms of what you need. Okay? But at the same time, uh, now and then on festival days, uh, we can cook what Krishna wants. Shalom says, Hare Krishna Prabhu, yes, 
uh, please do the next round of Sharanagati classes to advance our spirituality. Yes. Uttarwani says, thank you for sharing. I record a class. Many times I pick up things that I missed in class. Thank you for the amazing classes. Thank you. Ujjwala Prem, David S. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for always sharing this vast knowledge of Krishna consciousness. The Prabhupada has gifted us uh, with most appreciative and grateful. Thank you. Krishna Kirtan Prasadi, Krishna Prabhu, always appreciate your class. Thank you very much. And also the devotees had asked uh, last week for the groups. So here's some of the groups. Uh, there's the Spochu prep talk. You can just obviously copy this. And then on your WhatsApp, uh, you, can, um, you can add your WhatsApp on your windows. And then you can just obviously click on that link and it'll open up WhatsApp uh, or in your web browser. And there's the weekly study group and which we have uh, a WhatsApp as well as a Telegram. So you can join either one. If the WhatsApp, if the weekly WhatsApp is full, you can always join the Telegram group. And then we also have systematic Bhagavatam class, which you're most welcome to join. And if there's, uh, and the, the, there's, that's every Saturday, and there's also the recording playlist if you want to uh, catch up on any of the others. We'll also uh, be uploading uh, these lectures on Chaitanya Life Academy playlist. All right, thank you very much for everyone's association. Uh, tomorrow we will cover uh, the humility, Dania. Humility, also a very, very interesting and wonderful quality. Sri Chit Mahaprabhu uh, has listed this as one of the most important qualities, respect, humility, and not expecting any respect in return. So we're going to cover that. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to cover the the rest of the three uh, aspects that Chilabakta and Thakur also covers in his songs, but we'll cover that uh, briefly. Uh, Hamamati Radhika, you want to, your hand is raised, you want to say something? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, sorry, yeah. Uh, I just had a um, question with regards to enjoyment, like when we mm -hmm. render our service. So if we do something and we're feeling so happy doing it, are we enjoying that? Or like we're doing it to the best of our ability for Krishna and we're trying our best, but like while doing it, we're feeling like happy. Is yes, it bad? Is it true. enjoying that? Are we like oh, enjoying it? Is it bad? That's, that's natural. So part of you. When you engage in devotional service, you will automatically feel happy. Okay, so that is natural. The challenge is sometimes we have the attitude of wanting to enjoy. That is different, which means even before I do the service, I have the propensity to enjoy the service. Let me give an example. Uh, I give an example, right? So I'm going to cook for the deities. And I'm going to cook uh, butter pani masala because I like butter pani masala. So now I'm already going in the kitchen, going to cook for the Lord, already premeditating that I'm going to have butter pani masala in the afternoon. Uh, you know, even yeah, after the Lord eats, but I, I definitely go. I'm going to have a butter pani. I like, but this is my favorite. I'm happy. So I'm cooking already with the enjoying propensity. That is wrong. Okay. Okay. So having the enjoying propensity before even doing the service. That is wrong. While I'm cooking, I'll be blissful. Why? Because I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it for the pleasure of the Lord. So I will be blissful. No doubt. That is totally different. Yeah. Krishna, serving the Lord means you will be blissful. But what blocks that? What stops your advancement? is the propensity to enjoy before offering to the Lord. Just like the example of uh, the mangoes that Srila Bhakti Nautaka bought and Srila Bhakti Maharaj enjoyed that mango before it was offered. Mm. And, and Srila Bhakti Nautaka chastised him. How can you do that? We haven't offered it to the deity yet. Mm. It's not good. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj promised, I will never ever eat a mango again in my life. Because I'm a, I, I've, I've enjoyed it before the 
Lord accepts it. See, so daddy is wrong. Yeah. Is it, there's a clear org. Let me give another example. So, uh, you know, somebody says, uh, Prabhu, can you do the RT? Uh, yes. At uh, what time? Uh, well, we want you to do the four o'clock RT. Uh, sorry, uh, you know, we want you to do the, uh, the midday RT. Midday, but nobody comes there midday. So, you know, are you doing the RT for somebody to see you doing the RT or are you doing the RT for the pleasure of the Lord? See? <laughs> so that's the thing, right? Oh, no, I like to do Sunday program. Why Sunday program? Because she's going to be there. Mm. See? So that's already, you know, enjoying sense gratification, mixing sense gratification in the process of bhakti. That personal motivation, that is what destroys, that's what dampens, unfavorable. That's uh, not favorable for the process of bhakti. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes, Prabhu. So like if you meditating before you do a service, like let's say if you're doing a dressing and you think about it and that is that That's different. Different? is that okay? That's different. When you when remember you 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 obviously have to meditate. Just like if I want yeah. to cook for the Lord, I have to I have to I have to prepare what should I cook? And you will see the tension is okay, what should I cook? Who who cooked yesterday? What did they cook yesterday? Right? Okay. What did they cook the day before? So that, okay, they cooked cauliflower the day before, and they also cooked cauliflower the day before. So what I'm going to cook today? Cauliflower? No. So that means I also have to be attentive. What did they cook? Right? How did they dress the deities yesterday? So I can understand how I should dress the deities today. So that means I'm understanding the details. I have to think. Not like I just go there and then, you know, okay, you know, let's just pick something and just dress. No, I have to meditate. That meditation, that thinking is very conducive for my devotion. So one should think. Okay. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. All right. So if there is no other questions, all yours, Mukun. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you everybody for joining. We'll just have some version of the Go Matters. I'm gonna try and balance the laptop on my hand and feed them from my other hand. Don't drop your laptop. Yeah, I'm just gonna... They've been watching me, they've been listening to you talk also, so... <laughs> I've been... And they've been just staring at me, but okay, here we go.
That's it for tonight, everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow night. So I guess everyone can unmute themselves if you want to, or you can show your camera and unmute if you like, and we can just chant Hare Krishna one time and offer our pranams to all the devotees. Uh, let's just see. All right, let us go. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare 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 Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. Krishna everyone we show Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna